tired of having to use multiple tools to create your new API, to build the mock of the API, to share your API design with your developers, and yet another tool to publish that API to your consumers. With TIBCO Cloud Integration, you can do all of that with one tool. What's more, you can even build and run your APIs too. TIBCO Cloud Integration API Modeler allows you to build and manage your APIs in a simple, intuitive, browser-based UI. Let's see how it works by building a simple API. To start, all we need is a name and a version for our API. The API we're going to build is for our product catalog. We're going to build a few of the functions to explore the capabilities of the tool. Let's add our first resource. We'll call it slash products. We're going to have two methods. Get returns a list of products. Post will add a new product. Let's add some descriptions. First for the API itself. And then for the product get. The get is a search. And we want to search based on the product name and description. So we want to add some query parameters to the request. First we'll add name, then description. Next, we want to model the response. By default, we are given a 200 OK. This is our expected result code, so let's set this up. On the edit response page, we can add response headers and payload definitions. In our case, we will have a list of products being returned. For our response, we know the data format, but we don't have a JSON schema for this. So let's generate a schema with some sample data. Paste in the sample data and press generate. This does two things. Firstly, it creates a schema that can be reused by other operations and resources. Secondly, it retains the sample data to be used as a sample response. We will name the schema products and click save. Now we need to define the post. Let's add a summary. Now we need to define the input data, which is a single product occurrence. We'll paste in the sample JSON data and generate the new schema, which we will save as product. Next, we define the response. which will be a simple string containing a message. We will also change the response code to follow the HTTP standard and make this a 201 created. We can also add additional responses. We'll add the 409 response code to indicate some form of operational error. Again, we will add a simple string response. We will need a way to get and update our product catalog. So we now add a new resource, slash products, slash product ID. We will have a get to retrieve a specific product and put to update the product. Add documentation. The get needs the product ID for the request, so all we need to do is configure the response. On the 200 OK, we can reuse the schema we generated previously. Select reference, then start typing the name and we will see the two schemas we created. Select product and save. On the put, we need to specify the payload. Again, this is a single product, so we can reuse the schema again. Click on input schema, then start typing, select product, and save. For the 200 response code, we will have a simple string. This will do for the definition of our API. What we want to do now is generate a mock application that can be used to test the new API. 
From the API list, move the mouse over the definition and click on the three dots. Click on Create Mock App. Check you are happy with the Mock App name and then press Create. This will generate and deploy the Mock application. Once the app is built and running, we could call this API. But first, we want to add response values for the string responses. We do this by customizing the mock app's responses. Click on the definition of the app, select the products post, then select the responses and add a simple response. Do the same for the 409. Then do the same for the put. We can add more complex logic with advanced mock responses. If we click on get products with a product ID, if we look at the default response, it shows it will be returned based on the API spec. We could get that default and make changes here. However, we want to do something more complex. So click on Switch to Advanced Responses. We can now add JavaScript code that manipulates the response. Let's paste in an example. This code gives back a unique response for product ID 2 and 3. For all others, it gives back a standard response, with the ID set to the request ID and a price that has been calculated. To deploy the change mock app, we just select Update Mock App. Now we can test the app. From the browser, select the endpoint and click View API. If we wish, we can step through and test each of the resources and methods. Let's just try one. And as you can see, the result is what we expected from our definition. We can also test this with an external tool. For example, a commonly used tool is Postman. We can get the API specs URL from the View menu and import it into Postman. Let's expand the product group and test the post product call. Paste in a sample request payload and press send to see the product added message and the 201 status code. At this point, we can also test the exception code 409. To do this, we can add a new header, press send, and we can see the response we set up in the mock. Once you have some API specs, you may find you need to manage them. Let's look at what TCI offers. On the left-hand side of the API list, you will see groups. You can add a new group by clicking the plus. Selecting a group shows the APIs in that group. Selecting all API specs shows the available specs. You can move specs between groups by simply dragging and dropping between the groups. Now that you have your API, you may want to share this. You have two ways of downloading the Swagger spec. Firstly, you can download it as a file to your machine, or you can load it into a GitHub account. Go into the spec, click on Export, select the format you want, select the destination. Let's select GitHub and click Next. Here we can select the GitHub repo to export to, and we can set the file name and a commit message. Obviously, if you can export an API, you can also import an API. For example, let's select GitHub. We can now see and explore our accounts repos. We can select a file and import it. 
Once it's imported, we can see any errors that may occur and make changes like renaming the API. Also from the API spec list, we can perform other maintenance tasks. Please note, if you delete an API, it goes into a trash directory for 30 days before it is deleted for real. You can permanently delete or restore a spec from the trash directory. This demo is just an overview of TCI functionality. Other videos will go into more detail about specific pieces of functionality. These are available on our YouTube site. If the videos don't answer all your questions, join our bi-weekly live demos. These will delve deeper into TCI functions and features and allow you to ask questions. Other ways to find out information is to visit the TCI area on the community site. The community gives you the opportunity to share insights with other TCI users, get ideas and updates on TCI features. From the community, you can find a link to our GitHub site. Our GitHub site has a number of projects and samples to help you get the most out of your TCI subscription. Lastly, if you have ideas or suggestions for TCI, you can submit them at ideas.tibco.com. Tibco Cloud Integration empowers users to quickly and easily connect applications and APIs all from their browser. To see how TCI can help you, sign up for a free 30-day trial at cloud.tibco.com. Mm -hmm.